You're watching the NWR Investor Conference, November 2020. On the line, we have Dubba. Dubba is the world's leading provider of cloud-based call recording and voice artificial intelligence, emerging as a disruptive innovator in the multi-billion dollar call recording industry. Its software as a service offering removes the need for hardware, productization, or capital expenditure. It has been adopted as core network infrastructure by more than 120 telcos worldwide and has more than 190,000 users and has achieved more than 16 million of annualized recurring revenue. If you have any questions for Dubba today, of course, please just put them in the Zoom chat function. We'll soon throw to Steve and James. Uh, Steve, and J Steve is the Managing Director and CEO of Dubba. He has been for the last nine years. James is one of the founders of Dubba and serves as its General Manager and Head of Product. Over to you both. Thanks very much, Laura. Um, we're grateful for the opportunity to uh, present today. Um, I think we're, we're cognizant that quite a lot of people would know the, the core story. Uh, so we, we thought we'd give an update because there's been quite a bit of news in the company over the, over the last few weeks. We've put our quarterly report out. Um, we have done a capital raise and also a, an SPP for our shareholders. And um, we've also released an announcement around availability with Microsoft Teams. So we'll touch on those. For those who are new to the story, uh, we are, as, as Laura said, we're the uh, call recording and voice data capture platform for telecommunications service providers globally. And so what we've been doing over the past five years is actually creating the addressable market uh, and, and grabbing, if you like, um, telecommunications networks globally. And we've been fortunate enough to find ourselves embedded into some of the networks of some of the largest carriers in the world, whether it be AT&T, Verizon, um, Telstra's mobile network here, uh, Optus uh, in some of their platforms as well. And from that, what we do is we have two philosophies really around our product. The first one is that we disrupt call recording and we'll talk a little bit about what that means as we go through the presentation. Um, but basically we mean that call recording as a service should be able to be switched on immediately rather than be subject to project planning, capital expenditure, et cetera. It should just be available as a service, as any other telco service directly from the network. And the second part is that once we're embedded and scalable across a, a, a telco network, then we're in a position where we can serve AI, artificial intelligence, where we actually turn that uh, network from being a utility provider into a content provider. So in other words, in plain English, all the conversations that go across the calls on that network can be transcribed and converted into AI outcomes, which are then operating within the, the needs and the tools of the business that's the end user. And this can be for compliance reasons, for validation reasons, and again, we'll come back to that in a second. And also it can be any it, around business intelligence, which might be voice of the customer, or it might be understanding how the business is operating, particularly in a COVID environment. While we're on the subject of COVID, uh, we're part of an industry that has seen massive transformation at a quick rate, um, whereby you know, traditional infrastructure has had to be replaced with people working from home and distributed workforces. And what we're seeing is we're seeing that large enterprises probably coming towards Dubber a bit quicker than we thought. And they're doing that because two of the key elements for us, or particularly one of them, Cisco WebEx calling, is Cisco's cloud transformation platform. And Cisco have chosen Dubba as the call recording and data capture platform within Cisco WebEx calling. And so we have enterprise clients moving their telephony uh, to Cisco WebEx calling from traditional PABX driven, hardware driven um, uh, infrastructure because people need to work from home. An example of that for us in, in recent times is that a leading travel agent, uh, which you'd all be aware of, has uh, recently moved to Cisco WebEx Calling through one of its partners, Optus, and they've taken 1,500 seats for Dubber as well. And whilst it's an enterprise, essentially that business is a series of small retail outlets all looking to understand what the customer's trying to uh, achieve in a very difficult world, obviously, in the travel sector, uh, trying to validate all the information and highly complex information will be coming across those conversations um, you know, in the next few months. And so uh, they've deployed a telco service, which is Cisco WebEx calling via Optus, and with it, they've taken Dubber in order to capture 
the data, the phone calls across those conversations as well, or sorry, the conversations across those phone calls. So um, we believe that call recording, as we say, should be able to be switched on as a service. And we also believe that artificial intelligence or AI will become a major and standard feature um, in telephony offerings across networks in the coming years. And we're seeing the start of that uh, in our development today. So we've released our quarterly report. And um, for those who followed the story and the company, you'll know that commercialization really for us started in financial year 2020. Uh, we currently have 230,000 users that we've reported at the end of the September quarter. We actually put a quarter of, uh, we saw 24, 25% growth in one quarter for financial year 2020, which was the June quarter. We've continued that growth trajectory. Um, it's, it's prior to most of our large enterprise Cisco driven deals coming on board because of the sales delays or the sales timelines, particularly around financial services. So we think the company's in a good position in terms of its growth, both present and future growth. Um, we can keep on delivering, you know, short-term quarterly results, which hopefully are, um, you know, along the lines of what our shareholders are looking for. At the, t at the other end of the scale, however, we do still focus on making sure that we're embedded into more networks because the total addressable market across telephony is uh, presents endless use cases and, pro and provides us with a, a, a significant opportunity for increased recurring revenue through the company. Laura mentioned that we, um, we had $16 million worth of ARR in the quarter, quarterly report that came out last week. That's actually increased in the quarter by 2 million to 18.1. So on our current forecasts, we have $20 million worth of expenditure, $18 million worth of revenue. So far, we, can, we look forward to booking this year. Um, and so obviously we can close the gap over ensuing quarters if we carry on retaining the, the sales growth that we've got. In order to boost that growth, we've uh, recently announced that we become um, available via Microsoft Teams. And really this um, illustrates what we now call unified recording. And I'll get James to talk about what we regard as unified recording. And it, it's a real point of difference for us. So apart from being available via the network on a scalable platform, which is our, I guess, our USP, what it delivers, it delivers the ability for an enterprise to actually look at all their communications and tie them together using Dubba as the data capture platform. So maybe James, you can talk about that. Yeah, so um, probably many of you understand what Microsoft Teams is and then their growth in the market because it's been well publicized because of COVID. Uh, if you go back to a little bit, just if you don't understand what we do as a business, uh, we've deployed a, a globally a, a platform that captures voice or, or telephone calls at scale. Uh, it's deployed throughout the whole world uh, and we directly connect as our main focus into the telco networks, into their core of their network with the idea that once we're connected to that network, you literally can switch your phone on immediately and we can begin recording for that, that phone or that service straight into our platform, which means the customer has no time to wait to roll out equipment or software, they can just begin recording their calls straight away. Now that platform that we've deployed is a multi-tenant platform. Um, it means that we don't have different, different services running for different carriers. Uh, we record the calls and centralize them within that region. So in, the, in Australia, as an example, we have a, uh, the platform of Dubber running, we have Telstra connected to it, and now we have Microsoft Teams available. So with our launch of Microsoft Teams, and we've done that because of demand from, the, from our end customer, but also from the way that service providers are actually aligning themselves to Microsoft Teams and delivering that to their customers as well, along with their core services. So with, uh, with the example of what we're doing with Microsoft Teams and you, what we look at as, as unified call recording, so what that means is a business can actually, let's say they're using Telstra Mobile in Australia, they could use their Telstra Mobile, record that on Dubber into their account or into their service or the application with Dubber. And they also now can deploy Microsoft Teams, which a lot of businesses are doing, and record that and centralize those recordings into one like into their account in their one account of Dubber as well. So that's a first globally that that actually can happen. So now we can actually unify the recording for all their data across their whole business into one location. Now this changes what they can do with AI, can change what they can do with it, or how they improve the whole business and how they go to market themselves. 
So with, uh, with Microsoft Teams, it sort of expands from telcos into unified communications cloud platforms, um, of which obviously there's Microsoft, there's Cisco WebEx Calling, there's Zoom, Ring Central, and others. And um, that, that will give you an idea as to where we see Dubba expanding our total addressable market in the short term. Um, in terms of growing the business, um, some of you will be aware that we've recently completed a capital raise, and the capital raise is in two parts. Um, so first of all, there was a placement of $35 million, which was uh, extremely well supported by existing shareholders, institutional shareholders. And we also incorporated for the first time a shareholder purchase plan, an SPP, which enables all shareholders, all existing shareholders to participate in, in the raise at the same rate. Um, and that SPP was slated for a $6 million um, raise. And we'll, we'll give an update on where that's at, um, hopefully in the next few hours on the ASX, because we are mindful that some shareholders may not have received their form. So uh, we will give an update uh, later on today. Um, so obviously the idea of raising the money is actually to grow the business. We, we have currently 140 telephony networks that we're either already in or were contracted to go in. Our churn rate to date has been zero. Uh, with the exception of Microsoft Teams, we, we are the only recording platform in these networks. And so it, it puts us in a really strong position to capture the compliance market, but also to expand the, the, wor the world of AI. And there's no shortage of appetite in, in enterprise land now for artificial intelligence outcomes. And so we see those outcomes as being really two types. One which backs the distributed unified communications sort of dubber principle of being able to switch on across distributed workforces. And, um, you know, the, the example of the travel agent that we talked about a few minutes ago is, is, a, is a prime example where there are many retail outlets. The idea of putting call recording, whether it be for compliance or for data capture into each of those retail outlets, it would normally be quite prohibitive in terms of the scoping of it, the project management, the the, the expenditure, basically that company can just switch it on immediately as part of its telco service. The other end, as James has explained, it enables uh, enterprises like financial institutions to now capture all of the data across every single one of its uh, employees if they so choose to. I think it's important to mention that Dubber presents a set of tools that are there for the use by the end user. We're not out to record the whole world and listen to them. That's certainly not what we do, it's the opposite. We're there to provide a set of tools that provides value to the end user in terms of developing their business, uh, to the telco in terms of enhancing its revenue portfolio, and really, as we said earlier, turning it from a, a utility into a content provider. So um, with the capital raise um, tucked away, we currently are in a situation where we have more of these telco networks we're connected to than we do salespeople. And what we've shown over the past two quarters is that if we really engage with the channels and the direct teams of these telco providers, that we can really drive revenues in organic growth. And so that's what we intend to use the funds for. Uh, it's not something we can immediately put out the door and, and bring 100 people on because obviously it takes time to get the right people. So we now have a war chest that enables us to, to go and source the right people, build on our already um, established business plan for the next 12 months and accelerate it. Um, what it also does is it, it, it makes us, um, it puts us in a really strong position. One of the considerations, undoubtedly for the board, was when we looked at the Northern Hemisphere and we saw what we thought was an uncertain economy potentially, and we just don't want to be in a situation where the company's got every reason why it should grow, and we didn't want a lack of capital to be the, the barrier to that when, when everything else is going for us, particularly in um, the COVID, if you like, BCP world. And then the third reason, as we stated in the use of funds, is also in, in that uh, uncertain world, we think there will be some merger and acquisition opportunities. And um, I think Dubba's in a position where it can you know, have a look at some of those if we think it, it can deliver for shareholders. So that really is a quick update on, on where the business is at. Um, we wanted to keep it brief in this meeting because probably um, questions and answers might be more appropriate. Um, we are committed to delivering quarter by quarter continually on our results, those results being more service provider connectivity, more users and
around associated revenues, which lead to ARR. And we're committed, obviously, to increasing the footprint, whether it be through telcos or through unified communications platforms such as Microsoft Teams. And that's really, they're really the goals of the company. You may have noticed that we've had a rebranding exercise. Uh, we've taken on our CMO, Andy Lark. And so the new presentations are quite detailed and, um, and hopefully they're very explanatory as to what we do as an organization. And that really is an update for where Dubba's at in, uh, in, at the start of November, 2020. Thanks so much, Steve and James. A couple of questions have come through for you guys. With regards to WebEx, can you comment on how the pipeline slash order book is building there? Yes. And how do you know when implementations will happen? Back? Yeah, we can. Probably, probably the easiest way to give clarity is that we, we um, put a figure out in um, towards the end of uh, the financial year of 90,000 inquiries or user inquiries into Cisco. The, the sales cycle for a service provider is, you know, normally you can switch the service on immediately. With, with Cisco, there's a sales channel and a, and a process and as, as part of the furniture, as I like to call it, we are embedded into the order entry system, also the provisioning system of WebEx calling. And um, I think what's happened to Dubber is that we've probably seen the profile, the demographic of our potential customers uh, increase uh, in size. So we're, we're getting more enterprise inquiries than probably we envisaged early on. And the sales cycle on those, um, on those enterprises is a bit longer. So... The bad news is we have to wait a bit longer for the deals to come through, particularly if it's financial services where there are what's called information security or infosec uh, documentation requirements, uh, because it's quite a transformation, obviously, to go from um, you know, on-premise equipment for phone systems through to a cloud service. And it's not Dubber, it's the actual phone system that takes the time to get deployed, in this case, Cisco, where that's calling. And so, you know, we can see anything up to a, a five-month sales cycle for financial services. And so the good news, I guess, is that the figures that we put out at the end of September quarter largely don't include um, that pipeline. So, you know, we, we think we've got a solid base from which to grow the business over the next, uh, well, for the foreseeable future, just off the pipeline that's, that was already in play. A similar question now um, around Teams. So you have announced Teams. What is the company's strategy in terms of other platforms like Zoom and other unified communications providers? Well, on, on a macro level, I'd say it'd be remiss of us not to be talking to um, to, to, to some of those players. And, um, and, you know, obviously, you know, we're in the market to expand our footprint. With regards to Microsoft, James, maybe you can answer the question. Yeah, so our view is that... Uh, all of these platforms are complementary to our existing core strategy, which is, as Steve said, we're, once we're on a network, we're generally the only, and actually we're always the only call recording service on that network, on that core network of a service provider. So as businesses are looking to you know, deploy Microsoft Teams, WebEx calling, uh, it complements that existing core strategy of ours of being connected to the telco. So it's actually something that makes us even more unique than anyone else in the world. Uh, and as Steve said, it would, as the, you know, there's more services in the market like Zoom, we would always look at those products and see if they can complement our existing core strategy. Are there any stable data points that you can point to on either user gross margin um, and churn rates that can help the market better understand CLB? Uh, yeah, so churn is quite straightforward for us, and, and um, we, we have put that into our latest presentation materials. Um, so churn for the financial year, i.e. end users who connected to the service and, and subsequently disconnected, because this impacts our ARR, obviously our ARR forecast, um, it was 3.7%, which on any basis, I think, low in a COVID year where, you know, you know, small businesses were highly troubled to the point where, you know, some of them didn't survive. I think 3.7% all goes well for the future. On a macro level, when we talk about our customers, our direct customers, and the, they are service provider networks, and we had zero churn. So once we were in the network, uh, we didn't get taken out of any of them uh, during the year. And we believe that's largely because once a carrier makes a decision to deploy Dubber as its um, data capture platform, it, it's a very, very sticky um, um, situation in terms of, you know, they, they, they don't they're not gonna put another platform in to record calls, but when they've already got Dubber, and most of our customers are actually on a white label program. Uh, the second reason we, we trust going forward is that once you 
uh, become a W user and connect the data that we create, the recordings into, say, Salesforce or one of your other business tools, uh, the carriers are obviously very unlikely to ask you to disconnect those just because they want to take Dubber out of their network when it works properly. So, um, so the churn at both ends of, of our sectors has been really good, and we'd expect that to continue. Um, in terms of the cost base, I mean, one of the one of the um, clear benefits of what we do is that we're a, a cloud platform built natively in the cloud, not a hybrid um, technology. And so we have the economies of scale and the operating leverage whereby we, we can service a large amount of customers at a, a very stable cost. So, you know, our platforms at the moment are built to serve 400,000 users in each region. We can um, scale that up within minutes to any number that we, we need to. And the cost base remains very, very low and at the same, you know, a similar rate no matter how many users are on board. Another uh, technical question here. How do you look at the trade-off between user growth and level of discounting? Um, I think at the moment we would have aspirations for our um, average revenue per user to increase. Um, now, I say that across our customer base, and I say that because I think that you'll see more of our services by t being taken up beyond just call recording. Um, within an individual account, it, it's inevitable that if a, uh, if a bank wants to put several thousand users on, they are going to go to our partner and ask for a discount, and that may or may not flow through to us. But I think overall, um, you know, taking those into account, I still think that whilst, that, whilst there might be conversations around recording uh, pricing in large enterprise, I think ultimately those large enterprises are also have, also have the most propensity to take the increased applications of Dubber, particularly around AI and, and in some insights and in, you know, intelligence services. So I think overall, our ARPUs are still the same, which is around the $7.25. And I think if you divide our customer numbers into RARR, you can see that. Um, but I also think that our hopes are that the call recording revenues that we're experiencing at the moment are just the start, that in actual fact, as, as you'll see on the screen, there's, um, there's a layer of revenue uh, against applications on a customer journey. And we're, just to back up that slide you're looking at at the moment, that's uh, where we're seeing indicators that that's where we're heading currently in the demand we've got for, as Steve said, as AI is becoming more prevalent in the market, we're getting more customer requests that are a higher percentage of the uh, proposals that are going out to service providers and then and like, likewise to their enterprise customers. We're seeing a higher ARPU go out in those, what we're seeing in our opportunity list at the moment. I mean, the, the appetite for um, the use of data, insights into data is not diminishing, it's, it's growing at a rapid rate. And we're, we're uniquely placed to deliver a, a high rich, content or high content rich um, layer of or data set if you like directly from a telco network so you know we're, we're in a privileged position really in terms of um, the business model and, and the data that we're able to capture thanks guys so you've given us a really comprehensive overview of where the company is at um, in terms of products and what your focus is uh, this year and, and for the next year as well can you maybe speak a little bit more about what the market size looks like you, you mentioned that you know the appetite for data is is really strong. So if you could talk to that and also um, your competitors, what does the competitive landscape look like? Yeah, well, uh, our, our goal obviously is to increase the total addressable market um, you know, to, uh, day by day, really. And I think uh, the Microsoft Teams um, announcement sort of backs that up and we'll, we'll continue to go down that path as well. I think within, within our partners, uh, their own addressable market is increasing as more and more of their customers move from legacy telephony products into, into unified communications. The big, the big wins for us, I think, over the coming year, and if, I guess if we, what would you look out for with Dubber is, is um, being embedded into mobile networks, where obviously that's a huge addressable market in any of the incumbent carriers in a country. Uh, I think more of the Microsoft Teams type um, engagements will, will lead towards our unified recording model. And, um, and I think that, you know, you, you, it's hard to overemphasize what they mean. I mean, we, we put into our quarterly report, Cisco has over 90 million users of call manager or on-premise or hardware-driven 
um, telephony services, and their goal is to move as many of those customers onto their own cloud platform. Well, we're the recording and data capture platform in that cloud platform. And so, you know, as we gave the example of the travel agent, um, we're a byproduct. We, we don't need to be a, a sole sort of uh, sales mission out there. We're a byproduct of other people selling their products. And uh, naturally, a portion of it comes with us. And then once they get the handle on what they can do with the data, then the footprint within an enterprise expands. And, you know, that matches obviously the addressable market that we, we are uh, looking to expand ourselves. Just quickly, if we may, then we can let you guys get back to it. Will the share purchase plan be capped at six mil? Uh, that, that's the plan at the moment. Um, we, we're about to um, put some news into the market around where that's at and pure, purely around the fact that some of our shareholders have let us know that they haven't received their form. I haven't received my form yet in the post. And so we thought we'd give an update where the SPP is at and um, encourage people to go online and actually look to put their application in there um, and probably wait for an announcement to come out later on today and that'll give an update where we're at with it. But um, as with the placement, uh, we've had very, very strong support for our business model. Um, I think shareholders obviously understand the opportunity and want us to get there, accelerate as quickly as possible whilst managing, you know, obviously the, uh, the macroeconomics of the company. Wonderful. Thanks for that, guys. We'll cut the announcement on the market later today. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Thanks. Bye.